Analysis and Design of Multi-Segment Transmission Lines. In this video, I'm going to lay out this circuit wave equivalence. Many microwave circuits, transmission line circuits, can be approximated as a wave problem. And of course, wave problems could then be approximated as a, as a circuit problem. So we'll go through that. And then I'll show you a way that you can analyze rather complicated transmission line circuits very quickly and very easily. Pretty neat. And we'll end this video with a discussion, making an analogy between digital filters and multi-segment transmission line filters. And it turns out we can use digital signal processing techniques to design filters into our transmission lines. First, the circuit wave equivalence. This is called a stepped impedance circuit, and we're looking at a microstrip circuit. We have a ground plane, and we have some stretch of line of impedance one, another stretch of line of impedance two, another stretch of line of impedance three, and yet another stretch of line of impedance four, connected to some kind of load impedance, and of course being driven with some kind of source impedance. And so we have an incident wave, a reflected wave, a transmitted wave, and if designed right, this can perform a filtering function, sometimes very advanced filtering functions. How on earth do we analyze something like this? Well, first, we'll divide it up into segments. So each segment is uniform in the longitudinal direction. So we're putting the planes where the impedance has discontinuities. And we'll call this first length of line, length D1, the second the second transmission line, length D2, and so on. It turns out this will behave exactly the same as a wave propagating through multiple layers of dielectric slabs. And where we have an impedance of our transmission line, we would put a material impedance. The length of these segments are still the lengths of the segments. And we would convert our propagation constant or even effective permittivity, if you will, to refractive indices of these layers. So we can do this and get the exact same answer, and that's neat. So if we can simulate one, well then we can also simulate the other. And I'm gonna show you a really neat way to calculate reflection from a complicated circuit like this. Analysis of multi-segment transmission lines. And what I'm going to teach you, you can handle any number of discontinuities. It's pretty neat and very fast and simple. So we start off with our circuit. And we're going to start at the load. So from this plane looking forward, we see the load impedance. So looking forward, our input impedance at this plane is the load impedance. That's our starting point. Now what we're going to do is do impedance transformation. We're going to back up from that plane to our next discontinuity, which in this case happens to be between the three and four impedance. And we'd like to know what the input impedance is looking from this point forward using the concept of impedance transformation. So the input impedance from this plane looking forward we'll call Z prime four, and we'll use our impedance transformation formula. And the characteristic impedance of this line being Z4 is right here. That's why we have to use a Z4 prime because we can't just write Z4 here because that's the characteristic impedance. Z4 prime is the input impedance looking into that Z4 segment of transmission line. Once we have that, now we'll do our impedance transformation again, but now we're doing it along a line with impedance Z3. And we'll act as if the load, and in fact the load is Z4 prime. That was the input impedance looking forward. But in the impedance transformation in this third segment, we will treat this like the load impedance. And we will back up here. And now the input impedance from this plane looking forward is Z3 prime. Then we apply impedance transformation again, and we back up to this plane. We treat Z3 prime as the load impedance for this particular impedance transformation, and we get Z2 prime. That is now the input impedance from this point looking forward into the circuit. We have one last impedance transformation where we back up through the first segment of transmission line, and Z2 prime becomes the load impedance 
to this impedance transformation. So we have Z1 prime looking in. And so you could imagine having hundreds of segments and we just keep backing up, backing up, backing up through all the number of layers. And at some point there's enough layers where you don't want to do it on a calculator, you'll program a computer to do it. Finally, we have the input impedance looking into the circuit and driving the load. So the overall reflection then is the mismatch between the load impedance, I'm sorry, the generator impedance and the input impedance looking into the circuit. So this is our overall reflection coefficient for the circuit. And it's neat that we can do this. And we can do the exact same thing simulating slabs of dielectric for waves. And in fact, here is the impedance transformation equation for waves. And we're using eta to show that that's the material impedance, but we still have beta and D and it's, it's the same equation. We've just replaced Z for eta. Some final notes on impedance transformation. This is probably the fastest way I know of to calculate reflection from a multi-layer structure like this. And I know a lot of methods to do this. So uh, this is the fastest. It's difficult to modify the method to calculate transmission when there's loss or gain, but it's very easy to calculate reflection. So if we can ignore loss, then we only need to calculate reflection because the transmission is just one minus reflection. So this method is very, very good when there's no loss, then you can calculate transmission. We can still use this when there is loss, it's just that then we can only calculate reflection. And when there's loss, the impedances are complex. Another drawback of the method, it's very simple for calculating reflection, but if we want to visualize the fields inside the device, this is not a very good method for that. And it really can't directly do that. We would have to do a lot of additional work to visualize those fields. And in my opinion, it's worth just using another numerical method to do that kind of visualization. On to the digital filter analogy. I can only take this so far, and I'm just going to have to leave it there. I just want to connect some dots for you so in the future you can remember that and maybe use it. To compare a transmission line filter, a multi-segmented transmission filter, to a digital filter, we need some conditions. Before that, I also want to mention we can use this for waves or transmission lines. It works the same way, but let's explain this in the context of transmission lines. So we need some conditions where this analogy is valid. So let's say we have M sections of transmission line. So we have a whole series of reflections. If we were to calculate the reflection from that, we would get a very, very complicated equation, but we can simplify it when two things are applied. And when we're able to simplify it, that lets us put it in the form of a digital filter. So here's the two conditions. The first one, the electrical length of each segment is the same. That means the phase accumulated through each segment is the same, and we can just write it as psi. The second condition is that the reflections are small. Remember when we talked about the dielectric slab, we saw that a wave hit the first interface, some reflected, some transmitted. It then hit the second interface, some transmitted, some reflected. Then the backward wave went back to the first interface, some transmitted, some reflected. And it bounced back and forth an infinite number of times, and it made our analysis rather complicated. Well, if those reflections are small, by the time that wave comes around on the reflection, and it bounces around even more than just two times, it's essentially gone. So by saying that we have small reflections, we really only need to account for one reflection. After that, the amplitudes are so small we can ignore them. So it simplifies the math. Given our simplified math, here's how we can write the overall reflection of a multi-segment circuit when the phase through each segment is the same and the reflections are small. We see that we have reflection off of the first interface. We have a reflection off the second interface and it traverses two times psi, right? Because it goes through, it reflects and goes back, but it doesn't reflect again. So there's no more reflection terms. Well, technically it does reflect again, but we said that the reflections are so small that after it reflects twice, we can ignore it. 
So then our wave keeps going to the second interface and reflects, and we get four sizes accumulated, and so on, and this keeps going. Uh, we couldn't write this simple equation if we didn't make those two approximations. If you take a class in digital signal processing, you'll definitely at some point cover something called finite impulse response filters. And what I've written here is the standard form for a finite impulse response response filter. It's written in the Z domain. And I'll read off the equation and then talk about what it really means. So you have some constant plus another constant times Z inverse plus another constant times Z uh, negative two power and so on. And the way you interpret this is these Z's are delays. So if you have this finite impulse response filter and you hit it with a single one and, and zeros otherwise, you're hitting it with a digital impulse. Well, out comes H0, one click later in H1, one click later in H2, and so on. And so this is starting to look like what we saw from the multi-segment filter when we got a gamma naught first. A little bit later, two psi phases later, we get a gamma one. A little bit later, we get a gamma two, then a gamma three, gamma four. And these are starting to look the same now. And in fact, if instead of the Z domain, we express this in the frequency domain, that same finite impulse response filter, now it's looking even more similar to our response from that multi-segment filter. In fact, let's put these side by side. And what we can see is that reflection, these reflection coefficients essentially is the impulse response from an FIR filter. So we could go to a digital signal processing toolbox and say, design me a 100 point FIR filter, and it comes up with 100 values of H. All we would have to do is go to our transmission line circuit and adjust the thicknesses and impedances so that we get these different reflection coefficients. And then we've designed a microwave filter that has a really cool response using all of the tools offered to us from digital signal processing. I wish I could go more into that. I just wanted to connect some dots. So later on, perhaps you could pick up on that.